Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. Volley Bear. Viking Odin's son. Bear champion. I'm so excited. I'm so happy he's back. The buffs were necessary. Uh, they were small. They weren't pretty. And thank you to the balance team for listening. And I'd like to think that me calling this out on my channel multiple times had something to do with it. But I'm sure there are much bigger fish that were saying things about it. Either way... Back in the jungle, exquisite win rate for what we really want, nothing higher because otherwise top lane gets buffed, he becomes flex pick and we repeat the cycle of sadness. Not this time and you know, I haven't had the time to get uh, many games of myself, a lot of videos, a lot of coaching, link for that below by the way, schedule it yourself now. And so we are just gonna default to Genji Clid, always an exquisite solo queue player and he will do justice to our bear. Now the E start... I understand the temptation for this. Obviously, I know the bear extremely well. Uh, I know people don't like the champion rankings and so on, but I was like top five E West most of the last season in, in the jungle at the very least. So I don't like the E start first. Definitely go with W. The second proc of the heal now, which is 100%. Super thumbs up. We can smite the big one. We can E rain down fire. This is good. So let's talk quickly about the clear options that we have now. I have no idea what happens in this game at all, by the way. So th this this ward is very good for your, your Nidleys. You don't know where they are. You don't know what they're doing. If they get a leash here, obviously you can see that. And we get a leash from the Lulu. Lulu plus Volibear equals great success. More so than Portal 1's cake. Now, what we can do here is go Red Raptors. Uh, yeah, Red Krug's Raptors. You can look for this gank. If Nidley decides, you know what, I'm going to do some of this vertical jungling and then gank bottom lane, you can go, no problem. I take this, I take this, I gank top. Now Silas also got some buffs, so we have to watch that, and he can steal your ult, so he becomes the bear now, is I guess his phrase. But the thing with Volley Bear is that you don't have to do just a full clay, you can. You can full clay by about 314, leashless actually, if you do it really perfectly, but with a leash, definitely maybe a little bit faster. Practically, this isn't always possible, but uh, make sure you're auto-attacking with your passive, kiting them out, you want to get the second heal on the big raptor, which of course keeps you sustained in this case. Now this is pretty Rek'Sai-ish, right? I mean, you're looking at a 234 completion time there with the leash. You can straight gank it to Kiana if you wanted to. Definitely something you can look to do. And I think the full clear, as we just said, great. You can also simply ignore the Krugs and go 5 camp into uh, into the crab, into mid lane, into bottom lane, into tier 2 raptors and Krugs, counter jungling. All of this is possible now and you can do it faster because the thing about clearing is you want to be able to do as many camps as possible before your action. By that I mean before the fact that you're going invading, before the fact that you're ganking, before the fact that you're fighting 1v1 on the crab. If you can 4 camp, uh, sorry, if you can 6 camp rather, with the buffs before that crab, you have a level advantage over things like a Viego, which might end up doing a 5 camp into the crab itself. So that level advantage is absolutely huge. And if you're going Q-Max, like in high elo they usually do, that gives you chase down potential. If you're going W max, it gives you extra uh, healing and, and, and percentage HP damage. So make sure you chain these together. Very important now with the E shield plus the base damage being fully lifted to 750. No scaling, just 750 from the outset. Link those two together. 327 is not too bad. Fight on the bottom side here. We're coming level four. They're level two. What are they going to do about this? Okay, she just hits three. Um... We get the E down in position, the Q to stun, we get the damage to shield, that's fine. Excellent. So, early pressure is what we're looking for, 100%. Nidley is doing the same thing, but has already done the crab, now has done the gank. And Volibear's a few seconds behind in Nidley. At a full clear, a side lane gank, and a crab. That's pretty nice. Now here, I think, this is interesting. Because we know she did this, into this up for clear, right? We've tracked that. Nidley knows that the Volibear has done the same thing. So Nidley, because she's on a ward, if she decides, haha, I know you did red Krugs, I'm gonna slap in here and steal your tier 2 Krugs. Volibear can do the same thing very easily. He does not have to go back here. If this lane was primed and gankable, you can do that. If you see her go for this, you can then go for this and then gank bottom lane again. So the read and react aspect of this jungling is is really crucial. If you're not doing that, you're going to be in the wrong position. Volibear does not thrive on being behind. And this game, they are behind for a significant amount. Not a lot of gold, just a decent amount of time, right? 
you have to be able to be everywhere. You have to be able to control the game, to control the fights with your ult, with your ganks, and with your pressure. The Ionian Boots is something people are doing because that E has a flat 15 second cooldown. And this is now 11.54. So, high base damage, high shield, high usability with the boots. Swifties are still my preferred aspect of choice, but he's going Q second. So because he's going Q second, he's losing some skirmish ability, but in turn getting better cooldowns on the W, which is the heal, which is what we really want, plus the added movement speed scaling on his Q. The W... Okay, sorry, I meant the E comes down a little late there, but that's fine. He has... He has Splash, actually. But... Why Flash? You're dead. I mean, the Silas is dead. The Volibear ganks are so good on a push lane. The old Volibear had better push lane ganks. Because... Of the secondary CC and his kid, as we watch Nidley go on a hunt. Thresh is a champion. Some people think this champion's OP. I agree. Thresh is very strong. So, the pings come through here. We know what Volibear is. Tier 2 Krugs. And the thing is, because we farm so much faster, if ganks don't work out, you do not have to feel starved. You do not have to feel punished. You do not have to feel like... What do I do now? Nothing. I just... I just become Meat Shield. I do think there are some schools of thought where... With Q max, or at least three points into Q into the dead mans, you can really look for this skipping the turbo cam tank. You can go to Vine Sundra, uh, other itemization choices as you wish. I'm still a fan of the Frostfire Nash's builds into tank. It really provides you hysterical DPS and a lot of shielding and passive damage from your um, from your autos as well as your E. So keep that in mind. In your low elo games here, if you see a Nidalee, do this gank, get super low, go back to base, or die, what have you, and then maybe flow to the top side, I think I'm looking for this 100%, especially when bottom lane isn't up. However, we've just gotten 6, bottom lane returns to lane, Kiana's still pushing mid lane, Nidalee could even be doing the dragon herself, I think we want to hit this to see, but if they have vision, they know where Volibear is, and currently, the one advantage you have in this game state is, they don't know where you are. We have Kiana here diving the level 5 Talon, who's just gonna... <laughs> wait for her, and then uh, wall hop, but she's just gonna do that, so I mean, that's a little bit negligent, but hey, they both die, we take it. Valibur says, you know what, I was here for cleanup, but I'll absorb this experience, absolutely great. You can see there, 51 to 46. Currently, Nidalee is AFK in terms of our brain, like, we don't know where she is exactly, what she wants to do. We know she did this, we know she probably sequenced all tier 2 cams, and now, because she sees the Valibur mid going down, likely she's just gonna go ahead and steal your red. And because she hasn't shown anywhere, we can anticipate this. In fact, the minimap gives it away, I think, um, that, that this is happening. Actually, it didn't. It was just good tracking. Coach, by the way, <laughs> I like it when that happens, because sometimes people do things you don't expect, and it throws off the prediction, but it's nice to see good predictions. Because, again, I have not seen this game. I have no idea what happens. So, because you know this, easily, this is a crab into a dragon. I think we should look to do it, more so than diving. I think there's a bit of... Okay, so let's, let's, let's consider this for a second. Level 5 spikes, not level 6 yet. Not even close, actually. Good time to abuse being level 7 to level 5. You can deactivate with your ult. You've got everything up. We want to get on the map. We want to get some kills. We want to snowball a lane. Because we are a tank, we can definitely face roll the game. But we need someone with us as we get into the later stages. Let's see. I do like the concept here of going for this gank, but in your lower elo games, again, I'm going to keep referring to that, this dragon is huge because you currently have Pryo, and you know the enemy jungler should be somewhere else. If you were good at tracking, you know, sometimes people are good at tracking. I think we're wasting a bit of time here because we don't know if the try is warded. You know, we don't know if the try is warded, so you're kind of in this position where Thresh is low, they're zoning, they know that Nidalee's on the top side, they know Volibear's probably on the dragon, it's pinged away, I think we should just be doing it, in my opinion. I think that's a good thing to do because you can then have um, the dragon secured, giving you added damage, obviously, for these factors and these, these aspects of the game. But your bottom lane can then clear the try and set you up afterwards. Because we're just wasting a lot of time here. We missed the dragon window. We missed the item. I feel like this is such a huge inaction. Okay, there, there we go. I mean, time commitment. The blue, blue team's bottle main is basically just thinking, are we gonna dive this? Do we wanna... Now Nidalee's down here, and of course, Nidalee with a spear hit can be kind of rough, but with alt and with uh, E used probably, yeah, this is wasted opportunities. Because you just lost all your top side now, your bottom lane has to reset, you have to reset. 
That was a free dragon into bot lane clearing bait, into a lantern over the wall destruction kill, into turbo invade mega steel red, into Kiana's rotating freak out, use the plant to hop over, get out, maybe you get a plate if you annihilate them, otherwise, the very least, you've stolen the dragon, you've cleared the vision control, you stole stolen the red buff in return, and now you get to go b back to base with more gold than Gangplank's oranges apparently holds. There's no point going topside. If you go topside here... Okay, there is a point to going topside. We can gank top lane again, we can gank mid lane from... Um, are we gonna lane gank this for a dive? I think we should just side it. But you're giving up blue... You're giving up your tier 2 Grump, you're giving up your tier 2 Wolves, you're giving up your tier 2 Blue buff. And most likely gonna lose the dragon. So... On one hand... On one hand, we get the Herald control number because the Talon had to go back to base. And they know exactly where Volibear is at this point. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't like this motion. I honestly don't, I'm not a fan of this way of playing. I think we've given up opportunities we could have inferred. I inferred it just from the direct replay. I know there's always inherent risk in any play you make from a jungle perspective. And one could be right or not right. And, you know, three options could be right. There's not always only one play that works. Because this one doesn't not work, right? You can gank top lane here very easily, okay? He's gonna become the volleyball and hop over the wall. Polymorphed, never mind. <laughs> Lulu's a champion. Uh, we're losing time on the Herald as well. I mean, you stole the blue. Nidley, at this point, see now at, at this point, if you didn't see Nidley cross any of this vision, but again, like, I don't know why she would do this. You should assume this is always warded when the enemy jungler is on the opposite side of the map or resetting, so... I play bottom lane a lot, I always say this. Especially since Volibear has been bad. The ward here really aids in stopping invades and dives. And guess what? It happens way too much. So champions like Nidalee and Graves can simply wall hop this and steal it. But as we can see, they haven't done that, right? So the alternative to this play is if you don't see any visual confirmation of where Nidalee is exactly, there's a probability they're simply collapsing on you for this Herald. So you're going to give that up as well. That's why the Dragon Secure was so primed and juiced. You had the situation perf perfect for you to try and sneak it away, and you can because the flat damage on the E affects the dragon, right? It's a monster. It's now uncapped E damage. Okay, we don't get to slow because of the hook. Uh, Talon's dead, but Volibear is kind of big. We can ult here. We need to get the W heal. There we go. We get the chump to finish. Jinx ults to kill the uh, Kiana. Volibear now is a big boy, but at this point you have nothing left. Silas becomes Volibear, the Flay is not going to help. Nidalee chases down, auto attack spear dead. Lantern doesn't save him, and N Silas finishes it off with his bonus attack speed. Lulu was in base, nowhere near to help. I feel like we lost a few advantages that we could have had, especially considering this, the power of Volibear in these games. But, that's not so bad. It's not, it's not good. It's not so bad. Lost a dragon. Now Nidalee's going to take the Herald as well. Okay, we're going Wolves here. We are either going to go Wolves, rotate up for Raptors, tier 3 or 4 spawn, into Krugs, or we're going to sequence into the Blue Grump. We can look for a lane gank. I like that. I think that'd be really spicy, considering you ain't... No, uh, kind of have to hold mid now. I hate that. That's why the Herald play is good. It's not just good because you get all that Golden Fusion and you get the Primer push on the mid lane tower. It's good because if Volibear is looking to do this, he can no longer do it because he has to hold um, the mid lane. And now that's, of course, gone as well. So Volibear, I feel like Clid kind of did this to himself a little bit. Great top lane gank, great movement early. Shows the power of the full clear now. The fact that you're at the same CS as the Nidalee, almost, is, is really good. And you've been counter jungled as well. All right, so we hit the E, time it with the Q. We get the W proc. We ult to deactivate the tower, but Silas has a dash. Kiana's rotating up. We use the E as a zoning tool. She's patient. Hold up. Two times speed was too fast for that. Let's see. I think Talon did gaming things. Any Talon gamers in the chat? Okay, yep, yep. Talon did gaming things with Lulu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One assassin to the other. I still think Swifties on, on volley is better just for this mobility, you know? I understand the concept of having these Ionia boots for, for cooldown. I actually have to test it out. Q Max. We just put four points into Q and 3 into W right now. There might be a misclick somewhere, but that happens sometimes. Like, you'll try to do 3 points in Q and then max W, but because you're so used to maxing W, you just misclick. 3 points into Q into W max is also great. But those are your two choices. You know, I don't think there's a... 
an E-Max scenario anymore. I understand that the base damage is uncapped to 750, but beyond that, what do you, you don't need more than 750 and the damage doesn't apply. It's unreliable unless you're hitting your Q, so you might as well use the Q in the first place and get the, the percentage damage on your E to hit. Keanu rotates bot, kills the ADC. This is expected as well. We need to reset. We've got a dragon up. All right, here we go. We can see on the timeline something's going to happen here. Talon, nice Roman kill. That's why everyone hates that champion. But, I mean, we're at... Okay, so this is your power spike. Boots plus chem tank. Now you go dead man's or... Uh, Spirit Visage is just too good on this champion, actually. Okay, we throw the E over. We get the shield. We get the stun. We get the auto-cancel W. Very nice. Keep auto-attacking. We have W up. We want to try and hit that. We can ult to make sure we do. Stun. We get another E proc as well. Uh, I think we could have held that until the hook was used, but... Speed VOD Volibear Mechanic Review, but it's good. Kiana's top lane. We need to get this Dragon. We're not really concerned with Nidalee at this point, but she's going to probably try and contest this. Oh, uh, she is. She is going to try and contest this, but, you know, Bear is uh, very big, and uh, House Cat is not very big. Ah! Thank you, Nidalee, for the leash. That could have been dangerous, though. Still think the first drag. I still think you should have easily been able to, with this um, map movement, get Dragon 1. Get Herald 1, get Dragon 2, and have all of the same impact that he's had. But 5 points in Q now, into 3, in 3 into W. I'm, I'm really a W person, but I can definitely see the case of you really need to have uh, that movement speed to gap close now. But with, with Q and Chem Tank, I don't think anyone can get out of your way. See, this is where W 5 points comes in huge, but at this point it still does enough, right? You're overkilling people with three points. So this is sort of the ideal the ideal level. Five, three, and uh, two points in R for level 11. So once you reach that, Lulu, thank you so much. Appreciate that greatly. Boy, I love it when Volley Bear is good. And you're not going full damage on this, on this build, right? We're going full tank. We're going to clear these wards up. Now, you can simply reset for Herald. I think this is something very important here. You could go back and finish your blue quadrant. Now, some coaches, some junglers like to say, hey, everybody, please go back to your blue side jungle, finish all your camps before you go here. Now, if you do that, you're going to lose the setup time you've gained and earned for this Herald. You're going to infuse yourself greatly, but at this point, how much gold do we have? 2,100 almost. Is that enough to finish core components? Do we really need to have one item completed in one shot and you're not going to have one item completed in one shot anyway you don't have enough gold for that so here simply resetting giving up the side and making sure we all with jinxie head to this side of the map is actually the better macro play for the mid game and this is important to note for your early game powerhouses who really you know if you find yourself snowballing early game a lot and you find yourself with these leads and you end up not being able to convert them this is, could be a reason why i don't know why we would ignore that herald So if you're going to do this, you might as well finish it before you go to base. Logically. Because we could hold top lane. Because we could hold top lane. And we'd have exactly the same itemization we have now. You're going to go look to make plays. Currently, he went for the winged moon plate. He went for the chain vest components of dead men's. Plus a little bit of magic resistance for the Nidley and the Silas. I think this is smart itemization. Obviously, completing a full item is always better than, you know, garage sale, but in this case, because we have the turbo cam tank completed, this is fine. I don't like that we've gone back down here and we're giving up an objective freely. That's two now. Not my, not a fan. Because we could have very easily... Okay, that's... that's don't die. Ah, I love it when they don't die and you can just cam tank. She's there. <laughs> okay. Alright, so you give that up now, you're in the bottom side jungle with no camps up, they have two top lane for pressure, they have two mid lane for pressure in a 2v2 situation, and by the way, gold amount, yeah, your Jinx is definitely far enough ahead, but honestly, if Nidalee floats all the way down, could be scary. Not a fan of these movements. Not, not with a tank. You know, we didn't need the bottom lane camps whatsoever to actually, oh, well, I mean, it, if he's gonna do that. So, not a fan of the movements, but blue team apparently didn't want to win, so.
Oh well. Boom! Smackdown. See, this is why you get a Jinx fed. This is why you gank bottle lane. This is why you help bottle lane, and this is why you focus dragons. It's good. Trust me. ADCs that are fed with a tank jungler is the best world to be in. Lulu is always going to be useful. Lulu is used to being a support. The fact that Lulu gets CS and gold top line is nice, but Lulu doesn't need it to be Lulu. She's used to being a support, so having Moonstone plus a few other supportive items is all she really needs to protect the Jinx and keep you alive. If they overcommit, do rotate, please. Uh, don't go farming. Too often in coaching and in other situations, we see junglers go farm this, go farm this. You know, like, okay, good job, everybody. I'm gonna go do my red side jungle. I'm close to an item. Ugh, there's a dragon soon. We done good. But then bottom lane stays because they have nowhere else to go and they die being caught out. So make sure if people are fighting, you rotate. The camps will be there afterwards. Your teammates won't be. And that's 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 absolutely crucial. Right, so we need... Do we have it? We have it. All right. I'm actually not entirely 100%... I haven't, yeah, I haven't memorized all the combined costs of the different phases of all the tank items yet. Because I haven't played as much, uh, as many tanks this season as normal. It's really, that's the fun thing, right? By the end of last season, all of us knew all the combined costs for every item. This year, as we play more champions, different roles, different itemizations, we should be holding mid lane. Um, but we don't actually have to. We're going to start to learn those, those combined costs as well. Now, Talon is just running around killing people. Volibear decided to float down to these camps. Alright. If you are going a damagier build, let's actually have a look. Okay, we got the we got we made you okay, we got the E, we got the shield, we got the W. That's huge. We get the second W. Okay, never mind. So. Where are you going? I have Q Max. I don't think he needed to ult. I think he had E Q, but. Never withhold spells and ultimates. If you feel that they might get away, just use it, get the kill, it's fine. But that's, of course, limit testing. Knowing what and when you need to use spells. Dragon is yours. Jinx pushed mid lane. You know what I'm kind of curious about is the lack of pressure from the Nidley. And this is the kind of thing I, I love, I've been loving to talk about recently. If you have Nidley's kit and you're not... See, and you're not super invading the enemy jungler and you're not having the same lane impact as them, you are getting objective, but you're not having the same lane impact, the laners on the other team will be more fed. The jungler on the, on the enemy team will be more fed. Eventually, they will be able to win fights and rotations for objectives. Now, the nice thing about missing that, that first dragon is you're stacking mountain plus three oceans, if they're going to get to that point. That's kind of disgusting on this particular team. But Volibear's options now with the heal... 100% and the base damage from the E, this basically means that you're able to farm so quickly that things like Nidley, Karthus, uh, Lilia, that used to be such tilting champions to face, oh my god, I did. end of last season, I was infuriated. You go for a 3 camp, 4 camp gank, right, because you have to, because you're Volibear, and it doesn't play out. Maybe they have deep vision control, right? Let me let me pause while I explain this. You do this, do both, both, right? Against a full clearing jungler like in a Mumu, we just walk in and we kill them and we take their stuff. Against the Kha'Zix, same thing. Nidley, you could technically do the same thing. In Graves, I did the same thing. However, that isn't always feasible given lane states. You know, you can't just always three camp and then invade and go, <laughs> sometimes we have to look for the ganks, right? And say you do the three camp, you go for this gank, but the enemy jungler decided to fake you out. And that's intelligent jungling, right? I think efficiently is important. Normally, a Nidley would full clear, like she did, and then do her thing. Now, if she did that against a Volibear 3 camp and ganking, she wouldn't be able to match the tempo. There's no ways. And now you'd have top lane pressure, crab pressure, assuming mid had hands, and then you could full back to your camps here, reset, take uh, this crab, look bottom lane, look for counter jungling, or simply take these camps. I hope you followed that. <laughs> But if you did a 3 camp gank, like we just said, 240, 245, and the Nidley decides, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to do 4 clear. And she did a 4-5 camp in that same time and cut you off, and things didn't go well. Well, guess what? Now, she takes crab, she takes double crab, you reset, and you think, do I go topside to my Raptors and Krugs, which I can't clear that quickly, or do I go to my tier 2 Grump and try and secure it? 
then Nidalee knows that the tier two grump is your most valuable tool. So she's just going to counter jungle it and take it. If you go down here, you get shoved out. And if they have buff prior, they have assistance shoving you out. And now you're perma starved and you're out of the game. With the volleyball buffs, what this means is we can add in all the clears that we need to navigate these matchups. We can full clear, we can full camp, five camp, three camp, one camp. We can do whatever we... Okay, don't, don't one camp. Uh, we want at least a three camp for level three ganks. But the point being, because we can farm healthier, faster, better, stronger, etc. It means other junglers, just like in the Talia case where she got buffed, cannot match our speed and you have all the power in the world to deny counter jungling, set traps like this, and position yourself to get these leads. I hope you followed that. That's a really good theoretical discussion on early game ganking uh, technique versus farmers and how you want to look at it. But honestly, look at this fight. <laughs> Jinx, Volibear, let's look at that again. That was just too juicy. Very nice. And this is why I like high level team fights because high level team fights, yes, they can sometimes be fiesta, but a lot of the times they're just good. All right, here we go. Hook lands. Now here. He's going to go and stun the Kiana with his E's. E's already procced, it's animation cancelled, so they have no idea that he threw it down. That's important. You can E while you Q. Right? This gets you the slow. There you go. You get the stun because it's a little micro dash. You get the slow. You get the shield. Okay. Perfect. She has to dash away, which gives you some breathing space for the rest of your team. Talon is floating on down here. He's not really ready. Now, the next target focus is the Nautilus. Keep him away from the back line. Keep him away from the back line. Let Jinx spam her AoE from this distance. Volibear still has ult, uh, no, he actually doesn't have ult because he used it. But the, the Lulu has ult, excuse me, which keeps him up. And Jinx is just sitting here and you're just a big ass meat shield. And because you've got all your tanky components, once you finish this into Spirit Visage, you're basically full build. You can go your Wits End, you could go Sterex Gauge, I suppose. Uh, you can adapt into other itemization, Randwin's particularly good, actually. Uh, underrated for its cost. And now you're just literally sitting here and zoning. And there's nothing else left. And Talon dives the backline to finish that off. Anyone who's mispositioned. Jinx gets the resets. It's a great team fight. And because you are Volibear, and because you are multiple levels ahead, and you actually have the gold now to make these plays, it just puts you in such a great position for team fights. Too many times last season, at the beginning of preseason, I was looking for these fights in my master run. And I got to master with like 70% win rate on Volibear. But I stopped playing it in the last couple wins, just because it became so difficult to play against hardcore Hecarim, Lilia, and Nidalees in that sort of Master Plus MMR range, purely because if one thing went wrong, you were screwed, and you didn't have the movement speed to keep up, because if you max Q, you didn't farm as quickly, and you didn't fight as well, so it was just horrible, but now I can see why the win rate has gone up so much. You can afford to put points into Q, like three and then five, or you can just go five and then max W, like you have your options available. Just be aware that there's a difference in playstyle. What's actually funny is that was all one take. No mistakes. I love Volibear, I know my champion. But unfortunately, my cat didn't like that, so we, <laughs> we had to stop it. But it looks at this point, oh, there you go, the wall hop. Just not to get stunned, the E should hit for the slow. You get the W proc, now you get kited, you see? And this is where cooldowns flash, oof. That's, that's where this build is big. Right, that's where this is big. The ability haste on that W, now two points in, so nine seconds. So you can see here we've got, uh, it doesn't show, because there's no scaling cooldown at all. But the percentage damage increases, uh, as well as the flat damage. So the cooldown reduction in the kit, making this available every nine seconds with those boots is huge. And because you get kited out, and you have huge movement speed in the, in the Q max, plus you have chem tank, if that happens, you can always Q flash and then you just auto cancel your, your E and W for the finish proc. Just don't, you know, keep keep your distance. To use double lift back in the day, use your auto spacing. <laughs> I love this champion when he's fed. And you're full tank here, by the way, because as we said, you have scaling with your HP. So that's what makes it so disgusting. Woo! Fun. Just remember that you do have alternative options and the healing and divine Sundra builds are really disgusting as well. You don't have the same gap close ability without chem tank, but I think if you're if you're trying to smurf, it's a really good item. I do I do like Lich um, Lichbane. Lichbane works. I do like Nash's tooth and frostfire still, but I've yet to really test it because Big Bear is funny. I should be able to close now. I've talked a lot about uh, the champions in the last two videos. In in last one was was uh, was uh, Zin. 
and we talked yesterday actually, we talked very heavily about the champion. In this one, I felt like I trying to hybridize the approach. We talked about volley and we talked about the game. So hopefully it's enough for all of you. I know I speak quickly when I get enthusiastic about my champions, but I hope you could follow. I'm very happy Volley Bear is back. We'll cover more of this on the main channel, I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, the main channel, coachings below, Patreon for the fancy tearless stuff, as well as coaching options. And as always, I will see you all in the next Volley Bear game.